All right, so I got the new batteries for the uh, PowerMate lift. Got these off of uh, Amazon. So as far as I understand, the US doesn't provide a warranty for batteries bought on Amazon. And these ones are about two years old. You'll see a number written up here. It's 190305. So they would have been built in 2019 in uh, March. And then they've got a sticker for each time that they've been uh, charged. So the first one was 1909. So every six months they charge the batteries and either uh, if they find them to be too low a voltage, they just scrap them. But uh, so it was uh, charged uh, three times and it hasn't been charged since uh, 03 of uh, 2020. So that's uh, a bit over a year ago now. But I checked the uh, voltages on them and they seem like they're okay. So this one is at uh, 12.86 Of course my arm's in the way here. Let's take a look and see what I can figure out for a number. The suspense, what's it going to be? 12.80 and uh, I don't recall what the scrap voltage is on these batteries but I think that's okay. The sun and Sun and shine, whatever the original batteries in the uh, machine. I talked to a uh, power meet and they're fairly expensive. If I was using this thing professionally, I'd probably buy them because those are very good batteries. You ask the batteries are good too. And I decided not to buy cheap, cheap batteries. So that's where we're at. These ones I think are an extra two amp hours for the size. So we'll, we'll get these into the machine and then we're gonna split the machine in half because I need to do a bit of maintenance on it. All right, so I'll fumble around with these batteries and try to get them out again. So I'll compare the sizes. I've already measured them. So in theory, they should be the, the correct size, but until you get them in your property, you never know, right? And then these have tape on them to protect the terminals. I'm sure there's a reason that they did that. Just make note, so red did come off of a positive, and black is for a negative here. So I can tell that you the height is identical. The terminals, let's check the camera so you can see, but the terminals are sitting a different uh, direction. I don't think that's going to be a problem. The uh, length is identical, height's identical. Width is identical. So we're 100%, we got everything we need. These were a uh, 10 amp hour battery, these are 12. They may not put out quite as much surge current, but in this application you don't need a ton of current. Usually you're trading amp hours to uh, like amperage when you bought, if you change things up a little bit. I guess we'll try to plop that in so the on this side the negative was down. I'm gonna disconnect the other battery because it's dead. And I don't want it trying to charge off of the first battery. Put in. So it was negative on top. Save these, I'm sure you can get money for them. And if not, people will be happy to take them. There's no need to throw them out. I think they're probably 10 pounds each. Okay, so that was like this. Just seeing how much tape we're gonna wanna use. These are actually a different width of the connector. I'm going to have to crimp on some new uh, connectors. So that's not a big deal. You should be able to do that. It's just going to be a, a minute to do that. So I'll go get my tools set up and then we'll start uh, crimping on connectors. 
All right, so uh, good news, I actually had some connectors in stock and I have the uh, shrouded insulated connectors so I won't need to fool around with the uh, electrical tape when I'm done this. So I have a uh, wire stripper that kind of stretches the insulation off. You can use that, otherwise I've got a regular stripper that you can use. And then I've got a, uh, a good uh, crimper for these connectors so you always get a, a good final product whenever you use these. So uh, I guess the first thing we'll do is snip off the ends and uh, see if this insulation wants to play nice with the stripper or not. You never know. Yeah, it worked out good. See if I got enough off on there. Yep, yeah, so that's good. So with this style here, all you need to do is uh, match the colors. It's got a, a yellow dot on it. And uh, make sure that there's a crimp side and then like uh, the other side where the end of the barrel connector goes. It's got to make sure you've got it in the right spot. Otherwise, you'll. that's the only way you can really mess this up. It's got to make sure that the, the narrower crimp side is uh, going to squish where the wire is inside the terminal. And you just give it a tug test. And it's good, so that positive went over there. It's coming off of a, a circuit breaker. Just checking the wiring, seeing how the condition of it is, because I just got it. See what's hiding under this electrical tape. Oh, it's damaged, all right. I guess they would have shortened it if they could have. So I'll put some more tape on that. We'll crimp on a, another connector there. You're supposed to wrap the insulation so that it builds up to the same thickness as the wire insulation. So pretty good. I might get some background music. The people renting the house next to me are all in university taking music classes. I don't know if you can hear them or not. There's kids out playing too. So I like to get the uh, connector in here and held. Usually a two-handed operation. So you got that. This black wire is pretty short. I guess we can live with that. We've got more wire if it doesn't work. I'd say this is probably 12 gauge wire by the looks of it. 105 degree, 12 Yeah, 12 gauge wire. I didn't get enough of that time. That becomes a problem. If you don't get enough, then you've got to use the regular tool. You don't want to take off any copper strands. I just lost one. But if you lose a bunch of strands, just start over. Because the strands are what conduct the electricity. I'd replace this wire, but I don't have uh, anything appropriate. This has got a bit of a nick in it as well. There's these metal barriers here that are supposed to hold uh, batteries in position, and they're a bit sharp. So you want to have a bit of tape when you do this job, and then have some barrel connectors. The uh, Sun and Shine batteries had skinnier 
connectors than the Yuasa batteries did. I think you can get adapters for that as well. Some batteries come with them. Yeah, even the circuit board has a, a wider connector than the uh, other end. Getting there. So you see this is a pretty easy job. You should probably be able to do it if you follow the instructions here and what's on the manual. But I don't know. I think most of these are more workplace settings, so I don't know if you'd be permitted by your boss to work on this thing or not. I'll snip that back on there. So I've got insulated connectors everywhere. Red is red, black is black, there's nothing mixed up. All right. Get the red on here. It's on nice. And the short little black wire, that works out good. So you need the batteries in and working on this device to split it, because I need to move the uh, this angle part down and the motor that way away from things. All right. So now we're going to throw the positive on down below here. Sound good. In the way. Why would that be different? Yeah, I guess the other batteries the terminal was turned ninety degrees. So what I noticed was that some people had just bent that tab a little bit in order to make space. I'm kind of squished in here. Well, I like to flip that over. That would be like that. Make sure the wires are long enough. Okay, so I'm going to have to get a, a longer red wire. It's better if these connectors are on the inside. That way everything can be in the right place. You can put your phone back in these spots. So I'll get that fixed up and then we'll get on to the uh, splitting of the machine. Alright, so we've got the batteries in. We've got the uh, foam stuff back in so the batteries are in fairly firmly. I've got the terminals on the inside on both sides. So I guess we'll uh, Stand it up and lift it up a little bit. I've not really used this to its uh, full height. I did notice that it gets up way above your head when you're trying to lift it all the way. Turn it on. Now to split the machine, when you do this, there's uh, four bolts here that you need to remove. And then at the top, on each side, there's uh, two more bolts that we need to take out. They're probably 11 millimeter or 7 16 or something like that. But I found that when I was tightening some fasteners inside here, a piece of the motor broke off, just like a, a little flange. So in order to get to the motor, I need to split this. that this works. And then there's also a long like threaded uh, shaft that needs to be lubricated from time to time. They tell you to put uh, 300 pounds of weight on it but I have to get like a stand to lift on and I don't have that available right now. So it's uh, 
put this down and we'll take the bottom off and we'll separate things. Take a look at what's going on inside of it. All right, so I got started uh, pulling this apart here. It is just the uh, 11 millimeter or 7 16 to separate this. And then it's uh, carriage bolts, so you don't need any tool on the far side. Hammer them. Get one of them. Yeah, just regular, uh, probably grade five fasteners on there. So now we'll get the camera looking on the other end. Might be convenient to do this on a table if you have one. This thing's about 100 pounds. So I can see that this fastener has been off. So someone's been in here before me, which is all right. I don't mind it just being serviced. But I did notice that there's a funny stack of washers attached to the motor. I think that there was a. I actually need to use a wrench. You could probably see that, and I couldn't. Just have to take these two bolts out. Just bear with me while I find a wrench. Wondering if there's any wires to worry about. Obviously, there's wiring inside of this thing. Alright, let's take a look at this. So, we got this uh, fairly far apart now. Take a look at the uh, motor. It's got some kind of a coupling that disconnects when you separate it. So, I don't know if we can see it or not, but what happened was I was working on the fasteners and uh, actually the bottom of both fasteners is missing. I was tightening up these here and it snapped off the ends of them. And for some reason there's nothing on the front ones, top ones. So I would assume that it's pushing out because these little fittings wouldn't be able to hold all the weight if it was holding the weight the other way around. But anyway, I've got to uh, find a solution to this because I don't intend to replace the motor. So what I'm going to be doing may not be good enough in a, uh, a commercial environment, but for myself, I think I'm going to be okay because it's not like it's going to 
I'm not using it every day, all the time, in other people's homes, so I have to take responsibility for it at my house. So uh, I'm going to fix this the easy way, but you could buy a motor from PowerMate as well, or maybe even a housing for a motor. So we'll uh, stop this for a bit and we'll take a look after. Alright, so I got the motor out and started taking a look at it. And basically the way it's mounted was that there's a, a stack of washers underneath of it on one side and uh, for whatever reason it was kind of short one washer and it was rocking back and forth and it broke off these uh, pieces here both of them on the uh, bottom of the motor so I'm just going to epoxy them back on and then I'm going to add another stack of quarter inch washers to the uh, top of the motor and I'm going to drill through and I these are uh, quarter inch bolts that are uh, three inches long. So I'm going to put these through so the, the head will be facing the back like the, where the operator is located. So it's not going to get in the way of any of the travel of the equipment. It's a specific motor to PowerMate. It's got their name on the bottom of it and uh, like I said the pieces are broken off. It was sort of rocking back and forth in the uh, carriage. So I'm going to add these washers and then I'm going to put an additional washer on top to kind of clamp things into place and then I think uh, it'll be strong enough for my needs. So that's uh, what I'm going to do. Probably take a few minutes to get this uh, put back together. We're just getting ready to put it back together. I've got the uh, top holes drilled. So you just want to try to get that motor up and down as straight as possible. So there's a coupler on there that just slides onto the top of the motor. Then there's the ball nut which is at the top of the uh, lifting half of the device. I don't know how you want to put it, but uh, anyway, it's there. There's another support bearing and another support bearing there. So there's a few different things. I guess that ball nut there that we're kind of in the middle of the shot needs to be uh, replaced from time to time. It's like a giant power steering gear, kind of not rack and pinion style, but the, uh, the older style. And uh, you can grease that shaft a little bit. And uh, aside from that, I think the motor from time to time you need to put in uh, new brushes. It's just a DC motor. So that needs to be done. You can, uh, the Delrin wheels that are here come off. You can clean them if you want. There's a couple shafts, but they really should last forever. And uh, I think that's really all there is to it if you're gonna split one of these machines. They're a little bit different depending on style. I think they've been making these for up to 40 years now. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's lots of different variations of them, but I think they're all kind of similar. So uh, I'll get this put back together and then I guess we'll, I'll show it working. All right, so we got it back together. I got it charging right now. Just got a uh, regular trickle charger hooked up to it. The uh, fuse is good for 10 amps, so you wouldn't want to put more than a 10 amp charger on that connector. As you can see, I made a uh, replacement connection because the uh, previous owner lost the charger. So that has to keep out of the way of the uh, lift as it's traveling past. And then you can't use this when it's charging because you could blow the fuse. So uh, the hardest part was putting this, uh, the two halves together. I stood it up and uh, kind of put this on my shoulder and brought it down. Like obviously not that tall, but... And then you can kind of hold on to the top piece and guide the uh, shaft so that it lands on top of the motor. That's about all you can do. It's a bit tricky but you can do it. So uh, hopefully you find this video informative. This thing is ready to get back to work now. So thank you for watching.